This opponent opening up with uh, e4, just gonna go for the King's Indian uh, defense. And we're gonna be playing it in the usual fashion with uh, c6 and d5, going for the Gorgianidze. And uh, if he plays h3, that is actually some super mainline theory. Kinda doubt that they'll know it in one transpose and elo, expecting either ed or e5. Those are the two moves, maybe bishop d3, some of them will play. Other than that, I don't expect anything else in this position, honestly, but we'll see, I guess. Okay, bishop f4. <laughs> so we're not gonna see any of that, but I'm gonna be taking knight f6. Just getting into the tartak over pawn structure. Can we call it that with the double pawns? I'm not sure that's how you academically name it, but we can call it that way, I guess. We are already calling e4, g6, the king's Indian, so... Why wouldn't we call the knight f6 pawn take structure the tarta cover, right? I think it makes some kind of sense. Maybe it doesn't. So, yeah, taking this way, just castling. Hopefully we can get the pawn cube <laughs> at some point. And our king is generally ultra safe here, and that's the nice part. The bad part is if you, like, trade all the pieces, king and pawn end games are lost. So you should try to keep some pieces on the board. When playing this structure because opponent has like a four against three on this side so should definitely avoid like the most of the end games so hopefully you can get into some positions where you get activity in exchange so against bishop c4 i think it actually works quite well to do something like knight d7 b5 and knight b6 because uh, otherwise with the bishop on b3 b5 doesn't work so well because they have a4 but with a bishop on uh, c4, you can actually play b5 and gain a, gain a tempo against this bishop. So on queen d2, I think definitely throwing in this check is the way to go. Forcing bishop e3 and then just um, going knight d7. He might be castling long. We're happy to see it because we're ready to attack. And uh, remember this golden rule when there are like opposite uh, castlings? You should uh, definitely be uh, seeing this kind of game as a race. So whoever gets first wins. And that's why we need to start the... Queens I play immediately, so there's basically no time to waste. I had to play knight b6 because he was threatening d5 in this position. And now you see that he's already attacking, so I have a choice between either doing this and a4, which is perhaps doable, or starting with this, trying to slow down his attack. But I think we'll start this way because we're creating a threat of trapping the bishop. So on a3, now we could do that, or we could do a4, closer to bishop there, closer to b4. Trying to sacrifice a pawn. Couldn't do knight d5. There are like many interesting candidate moves. Could also do this. I think I already mentioned that. Mm. Also, this is like not terrible. Just sort of fixing his, his stuff there. <laughs> but I'm kind of afraid he'll play d5 and liquidate. I don't want to allow the liquidation, so... I want to start this way, actually. And after the trade, I'll have some annoying knight c4 ideas. I think that's an interesting idea. And we're also keeping some pieces on the board. Because like if I play h5 like I initially wanted, he goes d5 and just trading all the pieces. Maybe I'm like slightly better there, maybe equal. I don't want to allow that kind of game. So just bishop e6, trading bishops, uh, playing knight c4. And uh, yeah, just play uh, that position. So never taking with a pawn. I mean, sometimes when you actually get into like the end game, because you want to repair the structure, but... With queens on the board and your king getting weaker after fe, you definitely take it with a rook most of the time. I think that's like pretty clear. And then maybe going knight c4, maybe queen d5 idea to play queen a2. I think we're definitely in control here. He could do h5, I don't really mind it. Like whenever they do this bishop h6 thing, I think we have bishop back. Um, yeah, let's see. Could throw in knight c4. I mean, this can be a bad move. And expecting some kind of queen d3. Would then take play bishop h6 maybe going for some tactical tricks taking the e3 pawn also queen d3 could just do queen d5 and uh, just uh, play it more tranquilo and yeah i don't know i guess i'll just play queen e3 queen d5 no need to like force the issue just taking back not afraid of opening up the h file and yeah like you'd see probably some people would recapture with the f pawn being afraid to open up the file, but in general, that's actually even worse. So it's actually a bit counterintuitive, but taking with the H-pawn is generally best. 
and I'm like not really afraid of this kind of things because well, I can sort of always uh, force an end game if I feel like we're getting under attack. And second of all, probably play bishop a8, and he's gonna have a hard time, uh, yeah, creating anything there. I assume. Yeah, I think this is like only logical move for my opponent now. He finds it, and question is, what do we take? I think we can actually probably just ignore it and if i like really want to trade queens i could play queen e4 with a position that should be equal slash maybe slightly better for me or i could go more aggressive with b4 you know could also keep the bishops i feel like keeping the bishops is generally the way to go yeah okay, i'll just play the sort of typical move keeping my fianchero bishop anyways I don't think that was like forced. Could have in fact just play like this and play for domination. I think we're better. Yeah, bishop a8 I think was inaccuracy. Should have probably just played most natural move and just try to control the board and not really, the game is not really about an attack at this point that much. Still attacking chances, but more important to have control because if you're controlling the board and his attack will never work. This is still like okay in general as an answer to bishop h6, keeping the Fianchero Bishop, which it will generally make your king feel uh, much safer. I think, you know, Rook A4 would have been just a little bit more precise, but can't really call this a uh, mistake, I would say. Like, basically, never. So, also in some positions, you know, you never know if the bishop managed to actually open up and you get the attack and uh, then you look like the biggest genius. <laughs> so, Bishop F4, inviting repetition. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just bring the Rook now. No need to repeat. Also not afraid of exchange sack, just uh, dominate the board, maybe rook e2 next, could also do rook e4, hitting this guy, just don't have to, to rush with it. Plays knight d2, so could take an infiltrate with queen a2, that actually looks pretty deadly, uh, could also take, and okay, collecting pawns such as the one on g2, opening up files for the attack, is definitely asking for trouble, so just this with queen a2 is the way to go, and yeah, looks to be sort of winning on the spot to me. I mean, gonna be like pretty lucky if opponent can get away after allowing queen to infiltrate. Okay, so I could do queen a2, probably goes bishop e3, but then like queen a1, queen b2, wins a pawn, he has rook b1. Queen is kind of getting in trouble. I have queen a2 and queen back though, so it's not really an issue. I think this is still the move, so. This is sort of only try, cause like bishop c3, I can try to set up the mating net with rook e2. Cutting out the escape square and threatening this. I think this is like sensible, but just collecting the pawn and the queen escapes. This king is gonna be like weak forever now without the b2 pawn. Okay, c3 was actually a decent candidate that I have not considered for some reason. Bringing the queen over, I think we just go aggressive with rook e2. Yeah, rook is pretty active there. Not afraid of this kind of stuff because just bishop g7. Check and king is safe. It's preparing to like double up. Could be bishop g7 just in case. Uh, do I have anything better? I'm not sure. Maybe I do. I don't see it though. Can we go greedy? Maybe that's actually sort of the right time to go greedy, but I'll just play the safe move. Maybe he plays rook e3. Okay, he didn't. No, I think it's pretty safe to take. Could also go check. Probably just taking the pawn is like the right call. Collecting free stuff. Threatening to double up. There's like literally no attack when my bishop is on g7, so nothing to be afraid of really. And okay, queen g3. So the queen is like no longer defending the king. And I think it gives us a lot of like uh, interesting ideas to play for the mate, so. Important not to do rook e2 though, because of the back ranker, and uh, I think you're in trouble after rook e8. But now on queen g3, I'm thinking, well, this is like an easy move to just uh, sort of pass the turn. But I'm like trying to come up with uh, something nice after king d1. So, is it like an immediate win that I'm not seeing? There's queen b1, king d2. Can't really see how to make progress there, to be honest. Mm, queen e2, king c1. I'm kind of missing the final detail there. 
after sacking the exchange we might have to not go for it sadly and just like play it safe so, like if i do this queen h4 he has a threat to sack the queen do we care about that i mean not really like when h4 does at least f5 and uh, he no longer gets the mating net there are like easy ways to deal with that idea queen h4 is cool, uh, cool trick though also this same idea um yeah can i like force a mate maybe i can do like queen a1 and uh, rook d2 now queen b2 king d1 i'm not sure like that works but just uh kind of always have to check see whether something has changed or not yeah probably nothing has changed so okay what opponent did actually pretty clever need to give credits but uh i think still this okay this yes check so maybe not easy at all now how is that variation going queen b2 king d1 i don't like that we have to go into this but uh might have nothing better left that might be the f the sad truth hmm yeah pretty insane that there is no mate that i can find so like king f8 he goes for the check can hardly be good to allow that yeah missed queen h2 as a move i thought only queen h4 might have to just play that position with uh, being down in exchange no there's no flag because there is increment but i think We'll have to just uh, do this and, uh, well, then we'll see. I could like force a draw anytime. Okay, I mean, if he goes there, he's mated, but like he has this move and I could force draw, but uh, I don't want draw. Can I play for more? I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't think so. Swinging queen e2 and just play this position on. It's like pretty hard because I need to make an ugly king move, otherwise I'm getting mated. Yeah, I'll have to go for the kill. Just risking to lose now. Super unnecessary risk. Has check and uh, might need to do this and hope to get into the end game and outplay him there. But super messy. I don't like this. Yeah, just uh, go the end game. Okay, that doesn't really work. Now I think we're just uh, winning end game. He thought he's like somehow tricking me but it's just too slow can even collect his rook but can go for the mate yeah he's just like <laughs> almost there could have taken the rook as well but um yeah we managed to get the game but definitely the game, game kind of messy uh opponent get it to him i mean he was sort of fighting here it was probably better if he enters that end game honestly after uh, 27 if he just trades Okay, it's actually equal end game. So, I think it was, it was probably like good call to go for this. You see that I'm not really worse, but um, equal position that I can play on. So, yeah, apparently this was winning. It's just that I didn't see how. No, like this was winning, more or less same. So I, I calculated this position. It's just that in order to win it, you have to play this sort of call blooded before that I wasn't calculating, I was just looking for the immediate blow. So yeah, got the position to winning territory, but missed the final blow. And then okay, after queen h2, it's already drawish. So he found uh, a lot of good moves. Here, yeah, like probably rook a e8. Okay, position equal. I play pretty decent for his rating, to be honest. Thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. And in case you're looking for more episodes from the same series, make sure to click one of the videos that will appear on the screen. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.